Hey guys, it's me again, trying to stay right on a roll here with the videos. Um, today I just wanted to chat a little bit about being aware of your health. Um, I grew up thinking I was perfectly aware of my health and what was going on. Saw a doctor routinely like you're supposed to, but unfortunately not every doctor pays attention to the signs that they see. I found out about uh, two, three years ago that I have insulin resistance, which is basically a form of pre-diabetes, and you can imagine how great that ton of bricks felt like when it hit me. Uh, apparently this is something I have had most of my life. I've mentioned this before, most likely. Um, the fertility specialist we see now saw the signs as soon as I walked in the room. He didn't have to do any blood tests. Of course he did to confirm. He did some ultrasounds, he did some blood tests, he did all that to confirm. But he looked at me and he said, you have insulin resistance and it's basically acting like PCOS in your body. So he saw these dark brown bands. I have one, it looks like a permanent tan line around my neck and then under my arms. And I've had them since I can remember. I've gone back and looked at pictures, school pictures back in pre-k kindergarten I had these marks he also noticed I have this little lump at the top of my neck it's not huge it's not hard it's fleshy it's soft and he said I believe it's aneocanthesis I'm probably totally wrong in that pronunciation but he said this is a sign that you have this and it should have been caught years ago unfortunately where I live I live in a small town doctors here aren't knowledgeable and they're definitely overworked with their caseloads, so they don't pay attention to a lot of things. My periods were never, ever regular, and I never thought anything of this. Uh, it seems to run in the family. So I just thought, hey, this is normal, no big deal. Well, it took us wanting, my husband and I, wanting to conceive a child for us to find out there was a problem. Um, I'm looking into what I can do to make changes in my diet. The big thing is I'm giving up soda. Um, I gave up coffee, mostly, working on giving up soda. I do drink a lot more water than I used to, and now the problem's going to be changing my eating habits. I don't eat that much, and a lot of people think otherwise because of my weight. Um, I eat because I have to, not because I want to. <laughs> I don't have an appetite, and that's especially true with some of the other medications I'm on to treat my bipolar, which now I'm weaning off of to do fertility treatments, and that's going to be a whole other video. Um, at the same time, with knowing your health, you also have to look at every side of your body, and that's the big thing I think I'm contending with now. I've always been kind of removed from myself uh, by like one or two degrees of separation. I don't really focus on myself, poor self-esteem, things of that nature. So going into this, I had to be really aware of, I'm, you know, I'm aware of my physical health and whatnot now as far as what to do to treat the insulin resistance, but now I have to look at my mental health in a whole new light. My doctor recently looked at my medications and she said, I'm afraid of you going off of these. You're going to suffer and you're going to be uncomfortable and you're going to be moody. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to be pregnant too. So hopefully, um, so it's like, you got to really focus on your mental health. And I realized I have to treat my whole being and I haven't been doing that. And the one thing I want people to take away from this is to know yourself, know your body. Don't be afraid to ask questions. If I would have asked questions instead of assuming things when I was a teenager, going to the doctor, I probably wouldn't have the problems I'm having now. It's been six years my husband and I have been trying. So it's not very easy to come to terms with the fact that if I'd been more health conscious earlier, this wouldn't be a problem. Um, take care of yourselves, guys. This focus on infertility is stressful. And I'm a part of a support group. And my group, definitely one thing I see day after day is women 
freaking out. Oh my god, I think I see a positive line. And I'm looking at their tests they're posting for their HCG, and I'm like, I don't see anything. This can't be healthy. And it's just, you have to de-stress. You have to know your body and your mind. And in many cases, your spirit. If your spirit gives up, then everything else gives up. So, and I don't mean spirit necessarily as in religion, though for some people that plays in, for me, I think spirituality as in your livelihood, how you are as a person. Um, and you got to take care of that, or like I said, everything else goes to pot. The number one thing I want you guys to think about is ways to de-stress and help heal your body. I do meditation and yoga. My husband and I did some guided meditation last night. Plenty of videos on YouTube. If you want to look for them, go for it. They're great. Um, it takes 20 minutes of your time and it really puts you in a different relaxed state, calms the mind, which gets rid of cortisol in the body, which is a stress hormone. Get rid of cortisol. You take care of avoiding things like anti-aging and oxidization, which causes problems with your health. So do yourself a favor, de-stress, drink more water, drink some leafy green goodness in the form of a shake, or eat some leafy green goodness. Take care of your body. Do something fun. It doesn't always have to be stressful, stressful, stressful. And that's one thing I really realized at looking through my support group earlier today. A lot of these women are foregoing their health as far as their sanity. And that worries me. I already have problems with my sanity most days. And I know for myself I want to be more stable. So here's to you guys. Take care of yourselves. Be more stable in every aspect that you can be. You, your spouse, and your family will thank you for it later. Much love, guys. Take care.